Shalom and welcome to tonight's uh, Beit Rafa broadcast. I'm Rabbi Maurice Sklar and uh, I uh, got here a few minutes late, but here I am. <laughs> and Shalom to all of you, uh, all the dear ones and all who are watching and um, also coming online right now. Hallelujah. I have tonight, I'm playing the featuring the Serenade CD uh, that that I have on uh, the iTunes and also on my website as well. And this is uh, love songs and inspirational songs I did with uh, Mark Gasparo from from the Hall at, well, Santa Clarita, Clarita, but he's in the, works in the, a lot of the movies. And so he did these arrangements for me. So let me greet some of the, uh, <clears throat> I think this is Danny Boy, <laughs> to start, or London Derriere, as it's called. Hallelujah. So, hello, shalom to Ruth Summers. She's the first one on tonight. I sense you've been praying. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. And Cheryl Morrison, hallelujah. Jody White Judkins, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Sh Cheryl, shalom, Maury. Yes, I, I gave her permission to call me Maury so a long time ago. So that's really my, I went by Maury for for first 25 years of my life. So uh, Maurice is my full name, but. It's probably, uh, I named after my grandfather on my uh, mother's side, Maurice Siegel, but he probably got his name from his grandfather or something, they put, passed it down. So it's probably at Ellis Island, um, his father, uh, I think they anglicized his name, it was either Mor probably Mordecai or Moish or Moses. So. Uh, they just said Maurice when they came here. You know, they, they did that to a lot of names, you know, especially long Russian names, you know, <laughs> or Polish as well. So anyway, hallelujah. Cheryl, Sher, Sharon, sorry, Sharon Hubbard, good evening. And Rob Judkins, glad you're with us. And, and Jody's feeling well, and she, I hope she got through her, uh, we're praying for her. Uh, we got her tooth out, I think, and or, and then uh, we also uh, we've been praying for her back as well because she's had some long-standing uh, issues with her back and scoliosis even from a teenager. And uh, but the Lord has been doing a work in her, and they they also I I, I talked to them the other night, and I found out they're they are um, they have a, a they do a big outreach to the the homeless and the, you know, especially like in the campers and people that are, and there's a great need out here in, 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 especially in the big cities in Southern California, of course, Los Angeles. And it, uh, and I'm very concerned about the, uh, what I saw just now as I was watching, I, I had to eat something and I was watching the news and it's just what I saw, uh, that this would come it would come out from the middle of the cities and it wouldn't be just one city. It started in Seattle, but Chicago, of course, has been an ongoing problem. Uh, but this is provoking, if we don't stop it now, it will reach a, uh, reach a level where there could really be serious uh, consequences. We can still stop it, but we have, uh, I pray for President Trump, we've got to remove these people out of, of office that are actually trying to overthrow America, and the, the, and the Democratic Party, which has become evil, just, just evil. There's, there's, uh, the, there's, nothing, uh, there's nothing hidden anymore. Satan is just, he's, they're not trying to hide and pretend to be good. They're just, they're, just, uh, they're showing who they really are and what they really are. We've got to do something about it. We've got to pray, and the Lord said to me to tell those in the in the cities it's the pastors and the churches that hold the authority. We must every city must fast and pray. The churches must do so. 
because uh, you've got to break this at a local level. You have to you have to take back your city in the spirit, and you have to you have to defend. You know, do all you can. We, we it's a time for patriotism. It is true patriotism. It's uh, I'm not saying that, you know. I'm not saying be racist, and I'm not saying be needlessly violent, but you have a right, a God-given right and a constitutional right to protect yourselves. And uh, that's why we have the Second Amendment. Uh, that's why we have uh, uh, the provision of law and order, which is the primary function of the president and the, the primary function of government as well. Uh, so, uh, this has to be, uh, I, right now, the only solution I see in the natural is a form of martial law. Uh, it, we're going to have to take back the cities. That's it. There's no other, there's no other, uh, there's, there's no other, uh, if we don't do something about, you can't take the police off the streets, release people from prison that are, that are criminals by the you know, hundreds and thousands, and uh, expect there to be law and order. You, you just can't do it, and uh, this this has to this has to be stopped. So we have to fast and pray. The church has the authority, and we've got to stand up and fight for our land. Uh, fight in the sense of you know maybe I got Facebook's attention right now or something. I'm not say I'm saying we have to stand up not only to pray, but we have a right to defend ourselves. And uh, this will have a backlash that will be the death of the Democratic Party. It, no one will be elected that promotes uh, anarchy and uh, communism, Marxism, and uh, you know destruction of property and violence. You can't do that and have a civilized a civil society. They wouldn't allow that in France. They wouldn't allow that in England. They wouldn't allow that in, they've tried. Uh, they won't allow that even in so-called peaceful Sweden or whatever. You, you, at a certain point, you have to draw the line. So I pray President Trump does. And I boldly say that if we sit back and do nothing and pretend, uh, including the, if we don't take a strong stand right now, we could very lo well lose our inner cities completely uh, because until until they're stopped, uh, they think, oh, well, there's no consequences then. It'll just do worse every night. It'll, this is not stopped. This, so uh, we, have to, we have to fast and pray. United prayer will break this, you know, you have authority, pastors, you have authority over your city. Uh, ministry leaders, it's the church that has to pray and fast now. You need an Esther type fast or more to where we cry out that God have mercy on us. Because let me tell you something, the Satanists and the, the, uh, the, all of those, uh, uh, all, all of those that are, uh, trying to radicalize the left and, they, they, they're fasting and praying. Did you know that? And they're offering babies as sacrament. There was a horrible, I just happened to see it online, uh, a horrible album cover by that uh, reprobate uh, singer, Gaga Lady. Gaga Lady? Anyway, it was so horrible uh, uh, that uh, it, I don't, I can't even, I, I can't even talk about it. It was so awful. It was about, she was trying, she was had blood coming out of her mouth with children. Uh, you know, it, uh, it's some new, new uh, abominable music, something or other. And uh, it's, it's all about this adrenal blood thing for traumatized children. It's just, that is an abomination. That just, just something about that is so evil. So this is not, they're, they're not, say, the evil's not playing around. We can't play dead and expect everything to just go on as it is. We have to take a stand and we have to do something. We have to do something. 
uh, the Republican Party has to do something right now. Uh, President Trump, you have to you declare martial law, take it over, absolutely. And he's doing that. He's starting to send uh, 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 law enforcement into, I mean, get the military in there. Get it, take over every major city in the United States or they will take you over. And then the suburbs are not far behind. That means, uh, and uh, that means uh, this is how severe it is. And it's not far, far away like a year from now. It's right now. It's right now. Philadelphia, uh, I have a v real foreboding about that. The, the mayor... The mayor said something about arresting, you know, that's, that's crazy. Uh, federal law enforcement must, I mean, federal uh, military, we have to defend. The commander in chief has a duty to defend American citizens and it's going to happen. And uh, we need, you, you can't get anything by appeasement and running, turning your tail and running or pretending playing dead like a possum. Uh, you know, that's not gonna work anymore. We're, yeah, this, is, this is the hour we're in. I didn't know I was gonna say all that, but it just, it just makes me fired up. I don't like it. And uh, <clears throat> we better wake up, church. Church of the Living God is directly and solely held accountable and responsible we have to do something and we have to start being patriots. Dear God, stand up and fight. Yeah, I said that. What are you going to do about it? I still have a constitution. I still have, I am an American citizen. I have a right to defend my property. You do too. Now, I don't, I don't have guns, but I have faith and I have angels, bless God. I don't have guns because I never learned how to use one. Maybe I should have, but I'm telling you uh, in these inner city, <laughs> this, this, this is, abs you know, it's, you can't go any farther. There's no more, there's no more appeasement uh, you can do. That means war, war. You're gonna see it. You're gonna see it on American soil. You will see, you will see the takeover of the inner cities, probably within a matter of days, perhaps this week. You're gonna see, and the first one looks like it'll be Chicago. And when that happens, <clears throat> there's going to be a backlash, but guess what? If we don't do it now, uh, we might very well lose these cities. If we lose the inner cities, we will lose America. Just know that. And, and uh, so we can't do it. We have to. We have to do something about this. And I believe that's the, uh, you know, I didn't even think, and I was just trying to say hi to y'all. So anyway, so that's what I, that's my open. <laughs> No, that's, I, I'm very uh, alarmed now because I never thought this would ever happen uh, in America. I've never seen anything like it. And, uh, you know, this would never have happened in another generation. But this generation, we've become, we've fallen so low that, that even the great constitution of the United States is threatened. I, it looked impregnable to me. But, you know, you keep sinning, you keep rebelling, you keep, you keep tearing down the foundations of your culture and the foundations of law, which is the very first foundation. You can't have peace and order without uh, observing the law. You have to keep the law. And if leaders that are elected at the local and state levels uh, hate America and do not want to 
uphold the law, then uh, guess what? That's uh, not, uh, the Bolshevik revolution wouldn't be far. And it's happened before in history and don't think it can happen again. It can. If we, if God, God has to give us an Esther-like miracle right now. That's, I mean, and we, in order to do that, we have to unite, we have to fast, and we have to pray and break this uh, darkness, this, this, uh, this uh, coup, it's, 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 uh, it's attempted overthrow of America. And, uh, <clears throat> and then it's not going to let up. That's what I'm trying to say. This is not just some fad or some wayward teenagers, you know. <clears throat> Aw, poor millennial children. No, no, this is <clears throat> demonic. It is for the purpose of the overthrow of everything we hold dear in America. Dear God, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. <clears throat> well, anyway, hallelujah. Uh, I actually, <clears throat> uh, I get so fired up for this stuff, I, I get angry. There's such a thing as righteous anger, indignation. It's God, God, did you know God gets angry? No, he doesn't. He's nice and sweet all the time. Well, you ought to read your Bible, you know. Uh, why does God get angry when his people are abused, when his people are, are uh, his land? We heard last night, thank God for the whiners, it was amazing, but we heard Rose talk about the special covenant that God has. And he said that this was the only nation that was founded because we, the, the founders, I should say, Americans, first Americans, loved Jesus. They loved Jesus in the Bible. This was this country was founded on the principles of Jewish and Christian liberty, the Bible. And uh, without the Bible <clears throat> and without revival in America, and we've come, I believe it's coming. It's here as well. It's here. But we have to stand up and get some backbone. Uh, 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 come on, just like I said, wake up. Anyway, let's receive communion this evening. <clears throat> Tonight I have a, <laughs> I have a, uh, this is one of, Dvor Dvorah has a Kiddush cup that, that's a, that's just a silver a cup for, um, you know, the, the uh, saying the blessing and the, over special Shabbat, special occasions, like we do every night, every, yeah. But um, she said, here, you, you don't need much. Uh, no, they'll never tell how much you have. Well, I have a little bit in, I have a little, little in there, but <laughs> it's pretty and um, hallelujah. So <clears throat> here's the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem in haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Hallelujah. Praise God. On the night Yeshua was betrayed, he took the matzah and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. This is, I am the bread of life. This is the bread of life. Yeshua's body was broken so we could be healed. And, and his blood was shed that he, we could be forgiven and cleansed. Hallelujah. He did both at the same time. 
You cannot separate salvation and healing in the Bible. So receive. This is the body of Christ. Yeshua said, <clears throat> took the cup and he said, this is my blood. This is a cup of the new covenant in my blood. Uh, come into covenant. This is the new covenant. He, he died in our place and his blood paid the awful price of our redemption. When I say awful, I mean the great cost that it cost for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but receive the gift of eternal life. So this is the cup of life and uh, the life of God, the Zoe life of God through Jesus death and his suffering. And uh, we have received eternal life. So he took our place so that we may live. Well, drink it now. This is the blood of Messiah shed for you. Hallelujah. There's his, there's the Chabad. There it is. There's his presence. Glory. Hallelujah. Sometimes it'll come slightly before. Sometimes it comes during the bread, sometimes at the, but he always meets us. And this is one of the most, probably the most important thing I'm doing here every, every night. Every night we, we come back and renew that covenant and we receive grace and mercy, strength to help in time of need. Hallelujah. It's, this is a time we have to we have to, to stand, stand in our righteousness, stand in our covenant, stand. There's protection. Stand against fear. Fear not. God, Jesus is with you. He's with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. And you know what? Even if, even if something happened to, to me or you or even if we had to give our lives, God would even use that as seed for revival. The blood of the martyrs is this, <coughs> the, the seed of revival. It's, 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 the, it's the very foundation, and, you know? But I'm not afraid of death. See, once you break the fear, then you don't... See, you know why people aren't standing up? It's called the fear of man. But the fear of God trumps, not, not, uh, I don't mean any pun there, maybe I do, but, uh, but it, it supersedes the fear, the, the fear of God is the holiness of God and it, perfect love, we're going to be reading about that new kind of love tonight from E.W. Kenyon's book, I'm going to continue in a few minutes uh, there, uh, <clears throat> but uh, hallelujah. The love of God casts out fear. So we can, there, we have nothing to lose. There's no, there, we've already won. It's the cup of victory. This is the, the, the meal, covenant meal of victory. Victory, healing, blessing, provision, protection. Hallelujah. Come into the secret place. This is what God called me to uh, do when he said now is the time you are to start bait Rafa I said well how am I going to do that <coughs> he said start with my body and blood he said bring them in every night into a fresh uh, not only revelation but a participation hallelujah we and God together we're joined together we're a majority I have no fear. Fear has been driven out because the love of God in me is greater. And you too. 
So banish the fear, resist the devil, resist the fear. That's what gives, that's the what gives the fuel to Satan is fear. So starve him out. Don't allow fear in your life. Fear not. Uh, the Bible uh, says that, God says that to his people 365 times in the Bible. Fear not. Uh, I'm thinking of the scripture in the end of Isaiah. It says, fear not for I am with you. I love that scripture. <clears throat> Never gets old. I am with you. Why? You don't have to fear because he's right there. He's with us right now. For I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you. No, look at him. Look at God's word. Look and feed on the holy things of God's word and his spirit. Hallelujah. Come to the covenant table. Hallelujah. Come into the secret place of the Almighty. That's where there is protection and provision. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to have to minister on some of those wonderful Psalms. Psalm 91. Psalm 103. <clears throat> Psalm 23. I, I'm going to go take you through some of those. I, I don't believe it's this evening, but we're we need to. We just need to go over and over and 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 feed on them, just like you feed at the table. That is the table. This is the table of the Lord. This is this is the place where you're going to get, or not the only place. I know, I know, but if uh, you know, come and receive. Find somewhere. If you don't like me. For some reason, well, bless your darling heart. Find somebody who's anointed and 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 loves you and cares about you, is willing to go <clears throat> on every single day of the week and pour out the word and the presence of God and 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 cut covenant with you every night. I'm I'm with you in this. So fear not, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you. I am your God. Surely I will help you. Surely I will strengthen you. <clears throat> Surely I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Hallelujah. I don't care how many times I have to repeat it. It's, it's still true. It's always true. God's always right now, right now, right now. He's a right now God and he's, he's, uh, he watches over his covenant word to perform it. Just keep it coming into your heart, out of your mouth into your heart, out of your mouth. Meditate therein day and night and you shall, you shall be protected in God's Goshen, in the land of Goshen. Well, what if he doesn't? Well, it's just like the Hebrew children. But if not, I'm not going to bow to you and your statue, King Nebuchadnezzar. I'm not going to bow to the, the, this lawlessness and violence and, and uh, the, the, you know, antichrist system and globalism. I'm not going to bow to it. No, I won't. I won't yield to you. And my God's able to deliver me and he will, King. But, but, but if not, I still won't bow. <laughs> Even if I have to go down, I will go down in faith, but I won't go down. Because he's able to uphold me with what? The right hand of his righteousness. So you've got to get fully persuaded to the point where you're willing to look into the fiery furnace and know that if you have to go in there, the fourth man will go in there with you. God's going in there with you. And he'll turn it for good and he'll get all the glory. Amen. Well, I just get just stirred up again tonight. Praise God. Well, let's take our spiritual vitamins. And uh, I want to get into this book and just let's just feed on this wonderful book, The New Kind of Love by E.W. Kenyon. A marvelous book. Hallelujah. So we're up to in our Healing Promise Bible of uh, James Riddle's com compilation of healing scriptures and financial prosperity scriptures are two different books that we've been using and we I try to do one every day, and sometimes, a few times we haven't been able to get to it, but I'll get to it the next day, don't you worry. We're going through the whole thing. We're going to plant every healing scripture in our hearts and in our lives, and we're going to plant every single financial prosperity. And, uh, I mean, I don't think it's every single one, but there are over 7,000 promises in the Bible that will meet your every need. God wants to 
he, and he has made provision. And that's why we come to the covenant table. We worship God. We honor him. We give to him and we receive from him. And we, we proclaim and confess our covenant promises. Our covenant rights are in those promises. This, see, the Bible is God's constitution. And uh, he watches over his word. He's, a, he's perfect in that. And uh, that's why we can have confidence. We can have confidence. Even if a thousand fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, it shall not come near me. That's Psalm 91. And with long life, he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. Amen. So we're up to Isaiah chapter 46 and verses 3 and 4 for our healing promise vitamin tonight's. So let's, uh, let's receive it. So first of all, listen and let faith rise in your heart. Hallelujah. And then we're going to proclaim it and confess it out of our mouths. That's how we are saved. The Bible says so. We believe with our heart. We speak with our mouth. Jesus is Lord. And he's Lord of these promises. Praise God. I can count on them. I can take it to the spiritual bank because I know God is our provider. God is our healer. God is our shepherd. God is our peace. God is our righteousness. God is our sanctification. God is our safety and deliverance. And God is our victory. God is our success and prosperity. That's the new covenant in the precious shed blood of Yeshua, our Messiah. Whoever lives to intercede for us, he lives, he lives salvation to perform. That's salvation. That's what that word salvation means, not just a ticket to heaven and and for your sins forgiven. And no, it's a total man salvation. Total, there, there, there is provision for every human need in him. Praise God. So we, so we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to declare, decree this over you and in you right now. Here we go. Listen to me, O house of Jacob and church of the living God, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb. Even to your old age, I am he, and even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made, and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. Uh, in the Hebrew here, this is a picture of uh, a mother with a nursing infant or a father. You know, again, it's a, it, infants need total care. Well, little children. And, and it's a picture of God, the she good shepherd, taking the little lamb in his arms and defending us. See, that's what that's about. We've got to get to... See, but if you're in the twilight zone, spiritually, you're halfway in and halfway out, and you're serving, trying to serve God and the devil, you can't do it. Why? The Lord says, uh, Paul says, you cannot eat at the table of the Lord, which we just have done, and the table of demons. You can't do it. Choose. You have to choose. In fact, the pressure is going to get so hot, and the heat's going to get so hot, you're forced to choose. That's what judgment is. <laughs> Make you choose. We're going to find out who you really are. Well, you can't have both. You can't have it both ways. Uh, you know, you're not going to... It's not greasy grace. Slip and slide all the way to hell. That's what you... People that do that. And I'm not going to go that way. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to get as far away from greasy grace as I possibly can. I'm going to preach the grace of being holy before God, forsaking all and selling out and going in 100% and believing and yielding every part of our lives to God. Well, do you ever 
miss it? Of course I do. That's why there's forgiveness in the blood. I come back to the table of the Lord and I make things right if I did something wrong. Well, that's why we needed the forgiveness of sins. Thank God if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that implies in in that actually has the implication of more than just forgiving. He the blood washes it out. He washes away the stain. He he blots it out like it never happened. That's the power in the precious blood. He's able not only to cover our sins like on the old covenant. He's able to uh, he put them away positionally. He's just he's wiped out our sin. He's wiped out our sin. But we have to stay in fellowship with God daily and work out our salvation with fear and trembling because we live in these bodies. There's a devil attacking us and, uh, and uh, we're in this perilous times. So hallelujah, take care. He's able to, he's a, he will complete the good work he started in you. A few verses down in Philippians it says, but I work out my salvation with fear and trembling. How can both of those exist? I don't know, but they do. Both of them exist at the same time. So let's just, boy, I get to preaching. It's just, here I go again. It's fun though, I like it. I'm getting bolder. Uh, I, so let's pray, let's plant this beautiful promise and confess it over the blood, glory to God. <laughs> Oh, at the table of the Lord, at this holy altar. This is an altar where the Holy One of Israel, his flame, his fire's here. His fire's here. I literally, every time I sit down now, whether I'm on air or whatever, on, on, uh, or I'm not, the holy presence of the Lord is here. Glory to God. Well, who do you think you are? I'm God's son. That's who I am. I used to be a, I don't deserve any of it. It's all grace, but nevertheless, grace worketh. Did you know grace worketh? <laughs> grace. Paul said, I received, everything I am is by the grace of God. But he said, but I've worked harder than all of you. And he's talking there about the actual 12 apostles, the other 11 apostles of the Lamb. He said, I've outworked every one of you. And yet I was the one born out of due time. And I, was, I persecuted the church. I didn't see the resurrection. I, and yet God ordained me, this Jewish boy, to proclaim the gospel of grace to, all the, to, the, to the Gentiles. Well, we have different apostolic uh, realms of authority. Last night... I uh, believe and know that Bob and Rose Weiner have a genuine apostolic ministry and calling. Now, you know what? Maybe they didn't do everything right in the past. I'm, that's none of my business. It's under the blood. We're not perfect, but the gifts and callings are without repentance. And let me tell you something. There, that, was, that was the real thing last night. That'll cause you to grow up. You listen to preaching like that and teaching like that and 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 the outpouring that that type of government that that's see there are false apostles but there are true ones and i submit to you bob and rose weiner are true apostles but uh you know they're not it doesn't always mean that you're going to be in the top 40 as far you have to look for the ministry gifts nowadays uh not everything that glitters is, is gold I think that's in Lord of the Rings, but but not everything that, no, it's in Proverbs as well. Uh, you have to look, you have to ask God to put eye salve on your eyes so you can perceive what's true, what's false, what's genuine, because God is raising up and has raised up genuine apostles, genuine prophets, genuine evangelists, genuine if there's a if there's a counterfeit there has to be a genuine genuine pastors genuine teachers the real thing baby hallelujah we if that's 
That's how we grow up. We, God has set it up that way. We have to sit under anointed, God-ordained, five-fold ministry gifts. It hasn't changed just because, uh, you know, it hasn't changed since Paul wrote that in Ephesians. It's still the same way. It's for the perfecting of the saints. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm one man God has called, and there are others. And you're going to see God separating the true and the genuine. He's actually exposing the evil that has been in our country for the last 120 years. This All this undercurrent of, and the, you know, we were warned in 1960 about communism and, and before. I mean, there was a real, there was a real danger. They, they saw it and realized that. You, see, they knew history back then. We don't know history, but we, the the Cold War was right there. The, uh, the fresh on their minds, Bolshevik Revolution, uh, French Revolution, uh, Vietnam, uh, China, 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 China. <laughs> I don't know why I said that so many times. They understood this this ideology from that wicked, evil Jewish man, Karl Marx, uh, caused the has caused the death of hundreds of millions of people. And is North Korea? There's another place. You know, we couldn't survive in a work camp if you were suddenly transported there and made to work a day's work. Uh, you would make it. You'd probably last. Some of us may last two days. You literally, you, you, we, we. If you're not born into that, you couldn't. It's, it's like you couldn't even imagine how hard, horrible it is. And most of them are strong Christians. So this is not. We, if God didn't spare all the Christians in North Korea, why should He spare you? You proud, boastful, arrogant, lazy. Uh, backslidden American Christians? Come on. But we have, we're, we've, you had the privilege and the grace of being born in this land that where uh, they, uh, your forefathers paid that awesome price and some of them stood up as patriots before, uh, first before England, uh, Great Britain, and then, sorry, Great Britain, and then before uh, before their own brothers in the North and South. I mean, those are two terrible times. And it, and you know what? We, God, because of that covenant at Plymouth Rock, and I found out, I heard something. I don't know if you were listening to Rose yesterday, but she said, uh, no, I'm sorry, who, who? No, I heard it in the prayer meeting today. I heard it from Papa Gill today. We have a Wednesday uh, prayer meeting at, at the healing rooms with the, the staff and the leaders. And, uh, he said, we're coming up on the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower Compact. And it's in November this year. I heard November and I go, whoa, November 10th, I believe, 400 years ago. I guess that would be 1620. That's where this holy covenant was cut between those first pilgrims and then Plymouth Rock, you know, and the settlement and all that. That's when, that's when it first happened. And the Lord immediately said to me, this is what the war is about. We're coming out as a nation 400 years exactly from the and what happened well i never saw what happened to israel after 400 years to the day what happened we were delivered i believe this there's a reason why all of this is focusing on november this year and it's all out if satan knows if we get past that if we get past that time which we will and uh, this country survives, which it will, uh, then uh, maybe that is the time of this 
awakening that turns everything upside down. And maybe it's, I think it's already begun, but we're gonna see the overthrow. And I predict this, if America chooses life and not death, we are, we are in a life and death choice decision. Next four months, excuse me. Yeah, we're coming up on, on August here real soon. The next four months, we're going to have the showdown. This is it. We're gonna choose the life or death of America. And uh, it's a miracle we didn't go over the cliff three, three years ago in the election, three and a half years ago, but four years ago almost. What we do now, church, I don't want the blood of America on my hands. I'm going to I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray, I'm going to do my part, and I'm going to stay on the wall and I'm going to uh I'm gone all in, no compromise, no compromise, no compromise. And uh you know, God has is God is on the move right now. He's moving. He's moving. And this mobilization is happening. It's happening fast. And uh, what's hidden is going to burst forth. Uh, and you're going to see the giant awaken. Yes, it's awakening. We're awakening right now. <clears throat> but it's not going to happen without a challenge. And you have to take courage. You have to, I mean, can you imagine having to go in, in, uh, in formation into battle with bayonets in the Civil War? knowing some of them were their own family on both sides, you know? Did you know the Jews fought on both sides too? Yeah. We always seem to be here one way or the other. Can you imagine the kind of courage it took, what faith it took? Well, we're not, we're the cushy 21st century America. It's all pretend. No. Okay. Well, you'll see. But thanks be unto God who always gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's time for me to we're to declare these prom this promise. Okay. <laughs> so hard not to pre I, I get to preaching. Mm. So just say this, Ava Father, in Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name, I pray and I thank you that even in old age, I have your blessing of healing to sustain me. You do not hold back your healing power because I am old. You still see me as your precious child and your promises do and will always apply to me. No matter what my circumstances are showing, you carry me and deliver me through them. And I just thought of this. And with long life, you satisfy me, Lord, and show me your salvation. That's end of Psalm 91. Amen. Long life. That's one of the covenant promises of God. Of course, you have to walk according to his word and obey him and keep, keep the, keep the if then, uh, uh, places of obedience. Almost all promises are conditional. So if you do this, then I will do that, God says. So praise God. I declare in faith, I am a covenant partner of Almighty God. <clears throat> he has upheld me from birth and he sustains me even in old age. He made me and he does and will bear me. He does and will always carry me and deliver me from every trouble that I face. Well, even Paul and quoted, you know, and, and the psalmist said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of half of them. No, delivers them out of them all. And Paul said that too. He said, yes, I've been through all these things, uh, shipwreck and beatings and left for dead and <clears throat> persecutions and uh, all these uh but out of them all, the 
Lord delivered me. Don't ever forget that. Don't preach. Don't 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 preach the the uh, the sufferings of Paul without he delivered me from them all. Don't ever forget that. That because why? Because Jesus said, <clears throat> "My grace is sufficient for you, Paul." That didn't mean no. You're gonna have to just just put up with that thorn in the flesh. He didn't say that. He didn't say, no, I'm not going to deliver you. He said, use the grace. Use the grace that I've given you. My grace is sufficient for you. And even in your weakness, that's where I'm made strong. See? So Paul got rid of the thorn in the fight. Well, wasn't it because of pride? Well, Satan came because of the abundance of the revelations. Somebody needs to hear this. So I'll, because of the abundance of the revelations, he was had such a most wanted poster in hell because uh, on him was the very foundation of, uh, of the church uh, and the, Paul, the Pauline revelation and the victory on him, on his, that human being that was an enemy of God. God turned him around and made, and said, that's, my grace made you from Saul of Tarsus, the persecutor, murderer, torturer of Christians, to Paul, little apostle, love slave. With the abundance of the revelations, he had more abundant revelation than, hey, I mean, he, he, had, it, he had it all. And he had to write it down. He had to live it. He had to stand against the very uh, the worst of the war machine of Satan in the first century to stop him. That was his thorn in the flesh. And he overcame the thorn in the flesh because if you read the end of the book of Acts, it says he was, he was in his own rented house in Rome and he preached freely and he and and he he says in another place i am paul the aged in other words he lived out his life full life the aged paul well i guess i'm ready to be offered should i go or should i stay i think i'll stay because it's more needful for you i'm going to stay a little longer and then finally he says but i'm ready to be offered in second timothy i think ready to be offered I'm going to give my life now as a sacrifice. Pour out my blood as a drink offering. That's a place we don't understand. Well, until, until that point when I'm finished my course, then hallelujah, get me out of here. I don't want to stay a minute longer. I'm going to finish the high calling of God. I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to complete my work. I want to... Uh, pour, then I want to pour out my life, whether it, whether it be uh, by glorifying God, by dying in faith without sickness and disease at 120 years old. That's fine with me. Uh, or, uh, or, but if not, see, <laughs> if not, I still won't bow. I still won't bow. I won't bow to religion. I won't bow to defeat. I won't bow to Satan and his lies and his deceptions anymore. Here I stand. And here I remain. In fact, I'm not just remaining. I'm advancing. I'm going forward. And uh, you better get out of my way. You either get out of my way or humble yourselves and get on the train. Because this train will not be stopped. It will not be stopped. Well, that's why. Because Jesus already won and he's in me. And I take dominion over my future even. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You've got you to get to the point where <clears throat> that's it. It doesn't matter. I'm not budging. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to... Uh, and that's the faith that overcomes the world. And that's the kind of apostolic faith that it takes. 
and it's going to require in this hour. And so God is waking up the saints. He's waking up the sleeping giant and the army of the Lord is rising up. Not coming, oh, the no, it's here. It's here. Well, I don't see it. That's because you're not looking in the right place. That's because all you can do is look through uh, look through Satan's binoculars. Who, look at this, look at this. See, he's magnifying. Very small portion of the population is actually doing all this crap. God's after the church. He's going to wake you up and you will humble yourself, America, one way or the other. God said to me in the beginning of the shut-in, I don't like to call it pandemic because I refuse to have a pandemic, but this shut-in and the virus and all that, uh, which is, uh, it's the fear of it that actually has what is the teeth in it. It's the fear, it's not the disease. So is it real? Yes. Does it kill people? Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a serious, it's a plague. It's what uh, Jesus uh, predicted, Matthew 24. And, uh, you know, I talked about that. We're going to, we're going to go over there. Do I have to do that tonight, Lord? Well, let's just see. Okay. Let's just see. I've got to, we're going to take our, <clears throat> I might just have to do that. Lord, help me. Why don't you prepare? Why are you flying by the seat of your pen? No, I'm flying by the Holy Spirit of the living God. It's, this is his ministry. Yeah, he's the one. He's the one. I just, he just said, give me your mouth and I'll fill it. So that's, that's all I'm doing, basically. Of course, he filled my heart for 40 years. All right, we're up to First Chronicles and James Riddle's a complete Bible for financial increase. We have personalized Bible with all the promises on increase and prosperity. So here it is. <clears throat> First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10 is today's financial vitamin. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, Yabez, so saying, because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. So let's pray and plant this promise in us. Hallelujah. That's all we know about Jabez, but he's in the middle of a lot of names, genealogies, first 10 chapters or so, and most of First Chronicles, a lot of, a lot of uh, genealogies. But, hallelujah, Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Glory to God. So here we go. Abba, Father, in Yeshua's name, say it out loud. Hallelujah. Put the force of faith in your words. Hallelujah. That's what moves the mountains. I'm not saying faith in your faith. I'm saying have faith in God and his holy promises. That he means what he says. He says what he means and he cannot lie. And he watches over his word to perform it. And you shall have whatsoever you say. That is spiritual law. You can't get around it. You can't, you can't uh, snake your way out of it. You can't slither out of it. You can't religiosa, you, you can't, no, you can't. You have exactly what you say. You're the total of your talking yesterday. Make your words sweet because you're going to have to eat them. That doesn't mean God isn't sovereign. God is sovereign. But he gave us this amazing will. Our wills are holy. Our free will is a holy thing to God. He will not violate it. You can choose life, death, blessing, curse. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Abba Father, 
in Yeshua's name, I thank you that I choose to be honorable in your sight, just like Jabez. I don't hold on to false humility that never asks anything of you. I desire tremendous blessing. <clears throat> I cannot be a blessing if I am not blessed myself. Therefore, Father, prosper me and make my name great. <clears throat> just like you promised to. Bless me and enlarge my borders. Place your hand upon me in power <clears throat> and increase all of my substance. Keep me from evil so that my holdings, or what God's given us, will, will remain secure, including our constitution, praise God. Bless me, Father, and I will be a blessing to honor your name. I declare in faith I refuse to listen to false and disparaging reports that are contrary to what God says that I am. I am now a born-again child of the living God. I am bold to ask my Father for the deepest desires of my heart, and I lay claim to all that he has given me. Ooh, somebody got offended at me. Oh, don't be offended at me. I'm just reading what the Bible says. I don't, you know, be careful of that. First of all, <clears throat> first of all, I don't claim any power and authority in myself. I'm a dead man. Jesus, I died with Jesus on the cross. I rose with him. <clears throat> he lives in me. <clears throat> but it's God's desire and the Lord's desire to rise up in you and take dominion and is his will for you to start winning even in this last hour. Just like the children of Israel when they left Egypt, there was not one feeble one among their tribes and these were slaves for 400 years. Uh, <clears throat> and, and they came out, it says, with silver and gold. And the riches, of, they plundered the Egyptians, the psalmist. They plundered. The, God just turned it all over. Says, just get out of here. Why? Because of the plagues? Because of the judgments? Because God separated the righteous and the wicked? He was showing us what would happen at the end of time. That's, God's going to do the same thing. Why? The wicked, the Bible says, the wicked and the evil shall be turned into hell. And all those that refuse salvation through the blood of Jesus. By the way, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Don't shoot me, I'm just the violin player. But some of you don't like this, you have what you say. Well, too bad. The truth is, you do. Just like gravity says, you jump off a tall building, thou shalt cometh down and splat tith on your whatever. Yeah, the apple's going to fall. This is a voice-activated universe. And you have the privilege of choosing which kingdom you activate in your sphere of influence. In fact, if you want to get an exact snapshot picture of what images are on the inside of you, just look around. Look, look at your, look at your condition. That's a direct snapshot picture of the words what's in your heart, what you believe, and what you say. You just, and there's no way around that either. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, Jesus said, whatever is in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. I can find out where somebody's at, just listen to them for five minutes, and their mouth tells on them every single Time. It'll come out like a frog sometimes. <laughs> what did that come? Well, it's in your heart. And especially if you get around uh, pressure, like anointing or leaders and people that really walk in power, that, that puts pressure on your spirit. 
So if you're a born again person, you will, you will uh, be aware of that. I'm very aware when I'm around. Uh, if, if, see, one of what God called me to do was to be a psalmist for apostolic ministries, uh, to put a pr prophetic platform out for the apostles so they can deliver, so they can deliver their word without hindrance and, and, and in full, full sail, so to speak. I, 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 I'm like a, a F-35 bomber. I'll come in and just blow up the resistance so the apostle can speak. That has been, that is why God has put me with all these people. Not because I'm charming or something, or I have a, and I have a gift, yes, uh, the violin. But let me tell you something. That's nothing to do with me. But by God's grace, I've been with so many of these generals and for the last 30 years, and I can tell you something, one in particular. I can tell you something. Uh, Jesus really is Lord, and he's reigning, and he's coming in to take over this earth, and he's doing it with extreme care and mercy. He's so careful. He's so merciful. That's why it says, in one place it says that uh, uh, he said, he said, I'm, uh, basically God said, uh, I'm a God of mercy. That's why you sons of Jacob aren't consumed. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't for the right, if I was God, thank God I'm not. And I saw some album cover like the Gaga lady woman with the blood of children coming out of her mouth on an album cover. I would take her heart and explode it somewhere. I just, I, I wouldn't even hesitate. And yet, God has mercy on people like that. And politicians, that, you know, it's pretty amazing. Politicians that are so, they, they don't even know they're lying. They're, they, they, they're full of the devil, just full of the devil. Uh, and lying constantly and full of hatred. And, and yet, God has mercy on them. And they're in power for a long time. Why? Why do the wicked flourish, the psalmist said. Well, look at Psalm 37 and you'll see the end of these kind of people. Well, I thought you were Paul, grace and faith, and you have what you say. Yes, either way. Choose you this day whom you serve. See, how do you choose? With your heart and with your mouth. That's how you choose. The fight is to keep evil words from hell, from coming out of our mouths. That's where the fight is. That's the fight of faith. And and have you ever noticed the devil put pressure on you to say something? That, that doesn't mean deny things. It means to proclaim and supersede God's will over Satan's will. And in my sphere of influence, hallelujah, I've been given a realm of authority, hallelujah. And, as we're faithful, God expands that, and we do all we can. If we will work together as the church, the Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of the living God. And hallelujah. But we've got to get into unity and understand that, uh, you know, this is Frodo going into Mordor. There is, the, you know, or so, I mean, this is, this. there is an enemy. There is a lot arrayed against us that is already, uh, the bow in the, has been pulled. I mean, the arrow's about to be fired. And I'm just saying, you better get into a place. You better get into some place of refuge. And I believe Beit Rafa is one of those places. You make sure you're where God wants you to be and make sure you're under authority. Make sure that there's no sin in your life and make sure you forgive everybody and stay in love. And then God will make you bold and you, you can proclaim uh, uh, even judgment. And judgment is a part of, the, there's, see, that that's a part of the end times. Uh, all right. Well, we need to finish this. Sorry. So just say this. God's hand is ever with me and his fellowship 
sustains me. When I enter his throne room, I remain completely honest and without pretentiousness. Because of this, he gives me a place of high honor in his presence and pours out an unfailing endowment of abundance into my life. He enlarges my borders and shields me from all evil. Under my father's tender care, I live a life free of worry and misery. Praise God. Oh, I like those vitamins. I've been planning, I've been going through this, these two and some others, other things as well. I go through a weekly cycle of confessions and I, I'm certain that's why I'm still on the earth and the devil didn't wipe me out a long time ago. One of the reasons. And of course he's merciful and I'm not done yet and it's grace and all that, I know. But uh, what comes out of your mouth creates your future. Put God's word in your mouth and uh, uh, that's God. That's God fighting for you. That's God speaking through you. That's Jesus taking dominion through you. You have to enforce heaven on earth right now. It's not automatic. You can have heaven on earth if you take the land and keep it. Well, glory to God. I guess I was really preaching at you. I hope you got something out of all that. Oh, yes, the offering. Yes, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord now with Beit Rafa's tithes and offerings. And uh, I want you to know that the tithe belongs to the Lord. It's his. And what happens when we tithe our 10%, off the top, what, what, and I put myself, see, we, I'm, I'm, I won't tell you to do it if I'm not doing it. Reason I'm, and you know what, I've lived this way, I've lived this way since I even had money of my own. I've always tithed, ever since the early 80s even, always. And God's always provided. Well, why do I, isn't it grace now, we just can do it, you know, no, if you want to get in the new covenant, then God says, give it all, 100%, all the time. Give it all. <laughs> but God has set up a system through, uh, of, of a way to circumcise our money so that say, and, and it consecrates it to God. And we offer upon the holy altar of God as worship the first fruits of our increase. And that's how God prospers us. Hallelujah. Oh, see, you're just after my money. No, I'm after abundance to get into your life. I'm trying to get you to a place where you can receive exceeding abundantly into this hundredfold realm. Increase, increase, and Hallelujah. So our tithe belongs to God. Uh, Bob said it last night. He said the tithe isn't something you, uh, you offer to God as a gift. It belongs to God. It's his. Don't forget. Don't expect the enemy to stay out of your financial life if you don't tithe. Because guess what? He has authority to do so. If, because it's through this, it's through this that God, he'll take that 90% and bless it and it goes far more. And you'll make it. You will make it. There are rights to the tither. Those that tithe, God, uh, God, he says, I will rebuke the devourer and he won't destroy your harvest, your increase. Hallelujah. So the tithe is God's. So we have to pay that to our Lord. Hallelujah. And you do it as worship. You worship him. And just like the, the, the Israelites never came, God says in the Torah, don't 
come before the altar of God empty-handed. Remember the brazen altar. The brazen altar was where that was their best animal sacrifice, uh, a little lamb or a goat or a, uh, uh, an off offering of the, that was the, you know, at that time, it was a sacrifice. It was something that, that was not only valuable and precious, that's what makes it a sacrifice, but it's also, it's also what God uh, says to do in the Bible. Uh, now, yes, we are now, Jesus bore the curse for us. I don't believe he curses us, but again, you have to make, you want to, you want to get your money out of, out of, of danger, <laughs> out of, uh, out of the, uh, this world system that's the way you do it circumcise it give the first 10 percent always and i worship god with it i bring it before him and lord take this and then god takes that 90 percent and he prospers let's put it another way in the 30 something years i have been well 30 years i've been in ministry full time nearly yeah 29. Okay. <clears throat> I have never, never, never seen a Christian really prosper who doesn't tithe. Everyone that I've ever found that said, uh, everyone, and not without exception now. And I've met a whole lot. I've been all over the world. I've seen, uh, I've seen this. I've seen those that tithe and those who do not. And some say, well, the covenant of grace doesn't require that now. The, 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 the new covenant doesn't require we do that. After all, uh, you know, Jesus uh, didn't, the New Testament doesn't say to tithe. It does, actually. It says in Hebrews, uh, he said, Yeshua the Messiah is our Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, the, our high priest, just like Abraham brought the tithe to him. And he blesses us. We bring it to him, okay? I'm not, uh, and we bring it to the places called the storehouse. The storehouse is where you are fed, where you are protected, where God has chosen to put the fire on the altar, where there's, there's genuine altars being raised up in all kinds of unusual places. You have to look for them, but they're there. And this be one of them by God's grace. And I'm certain of it. So, <clears throat> praise the Lord. Our offerings are what we do out of gratitude, but also we do to, to actually sow our fields. That's where the increase comes from. The protection comes from the tithe, the consecration. You sanctify your finances or your if it was in the old world, it would be agriculture. You'd bring, you sanctify. That's that's what the the offering is. Even in pa the pagan world, they think, well, if I throw the Incas or the Mayans or whoever it was, if I throw some virgin into the volcano, <laughs> then I'll have good crops next year. Well, that's not. Uh, that's a that's a satanic counterfeit of what God set up. As an offering, notice that these these uh, satanic rituals they always involve what? They always involve a sacrifice to what? Lucifer, Satan. Why? He, he worship and he gets power that way, especially if there's blood in it. Well, the blood of Jesus. There is no more, nothing more powerful in the universe. That is the covenant of all covenants. That's. Uh, the mother of all covenants. That is it. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> hallelujah. You get, you get covenant with God. You in covenant with God, you're going to make it because he takes responsibility for you. But our offerings, that's how we sow our field and water it and receive. And that's where increase comes from. And I'm starting to learn about that more. I've known about it, but... I haven't actually acted on it. And uh, I'm, you know, as God leads, I am sowing 
my fields. I am sowing. And the Lord wants you to do so. And he wants to protect and he wants to bless you financially, supernaturally, multiply, multiply it and provide for you right now, even in this time where of economic upheaval and uh, God will give you jobs, he'll give you favor, he'll, he'll, you'll make it, you'll, God will make a way for you. But you have to also open yourself to a place where you can receive. So that's the way God set the whole thing up and it will work. And I've never, never seen real prosperity in a saint's life who thinks, well, I'm not required to tithe and I'm just not gonna do it. Now this is a statistic in the church in America. Less than 18% of God's people tithe. Well, no wonder they're in the mess they're in. No wonder. The devil has high carnival. He just holds, he just, he can steal from you. He can, he can do all kinds of stuff till you put that hedge of thorns up. You consecrate your money to God and uh, you offer, offer it to him. Then God has a legal right to defend it and to multiply you and put his blessing on top. What you really need is the blessing of God. And that comes, that comes through the right kind of you know, putting him first. And I've proven that by God's grace. I've proven it for many years. And I guarantee you one thing, not because of me, but because God is a covenant keeping God. Because I tithe and I give, the next time you see me, I will be there. I will make it. Now, may not, that doesn't mean you won't be challenged. I've been through lean times. I've been through even desperate type of times. But somehow I'm still here. And every day, God provides. And sometimes it's day by day, including most of this month of August for me, day by day. But hallelujah, every bill is paid. I owe no man anything, which is a miracle too, because God brought debt cancellation, hallelujah. He, he did it. He did it how? Through tithes and offerings, that's how. That's how it came. It didn't come instantly. It came over a process of sev several years, but I have lived now uh, quite a long time, no debt. And my needs are met and we're doing fine. The faith part is it comes in and it goes out. <laughs> and then there's another day and God likes it when we trust him and so I, I'm just uh, encouraging you there. Amen. Well, see, see what? That I trust God? I don't have a plan B. I've, I've tried to give my last dollar more times than I can count and haven't succeeded yet. Well, don't... Well, if I'm giving something, you work for me. No, I don't work for you. I work for the Most High God. In fact, I don't, and hallelujah, he's my provider, he's my source. You might get the privilege, the privilege and honor of supporting me, but that's different than, you know, in the world, okay, I'm paying for you. You're not, no, you're not. You. I'm too expensive for you. You couldn't buy me. I cost too much. You know what I cost? The blood of Messiah. That's how, that's my worth. And you don't have enough money to buy me. I'm not for sale either. I'm a gift, given as a gift. Everything God does is gifts. Everything he does is gifts. And it's the same is true for finances. If you have anything, God gave it to you. That's why you have it. Well, I earned it. I did it my way. I paid. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. God gave you grace to keep your heart going. And gave you another breath. And he's giving you another one right now. 
and he gave you the ability and the strength and the time and the vision and the uh, the very uh, life in you to produce well. Deuteronomy 8 says, don't forget when all these things, that's what's happened in America, they've forgotten. Read Deuteronomy 8, they've forgotten. They don't remember the dust bowl. They don't remember the depression. They don't remember the Civil War. They don't remember uh, Valley Forge. They don't remember uh, the uh, the terrible suffering. Now we're we're trying to remember the slavery suffering, and, and thank God for the abolitionists. Thank God for the men that stood up against that, who are all Republican, by the way. It was the Democrats that fought against, uh, fought to keep slavery, and actually, uh, and. They're the group that founded the Ku Klux Klan. You know, everything's upside down and inside out and lies, fake news. Why don't you read some history uh, and, and you will change what you think. And same is true in the Middle East and Israel. You've been sold a pack of lies about because you don't know history. They're trying to wipe it out, take it over just like they did in the Soviet Union, just like they did in, uh, the communists did in China. Do you know how horrible the cultural revolution was in China? Destroyed every good thing. That's the devil. Okay. Well, I got going on that, didn't I? You must need to hear it. Hallelujah. Well, let's let's go now, and I'm going to spend the rest of the time here. Um, maybe even a little more, about a half hour, I'm going to... We're just going to read now from this wonderful book about the love of God. I got on you a little bit because... Hallelujah. Because we need to get our heart in the kingdom and out of this world. The system especially concerning money. You've got, this is not a time to try to hoard. This is not a time to try to, you know, uh, you know, put, put yourself into the world system and to try to get increased. The, it's collapsing. They're borrowing trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. I'm going to stop that now. So we're going to go. Forgive me if I rode that horse longer than you wanted me to. This book is by E.W. Kenyon, a masterpiece, perhaps the greatest masterpiece on the love of Jesus, love of God, the new kind of love that Jesus brought, agape love, uh, in the entire church age and perhaps certainly in the 20th century i don't know a better book on this it's, and again i'm not talking about literature literary or i'm not talking necessarily about poetic i'm not talking about i'm talking about revelation knowledge of uh, just holy spirit led writing here we go chapter 9 we're up to chapter 9 taking our place in love. A home could never be destroyed if every member could be taught to take his place in love. The wife would never remember the past mistakes of her husband, nor the husband ever remind the wife of any unpleasant happenings. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I did that even today. Forgive me, Lord. All the mistakes and failures of the past would be wiped out. What homes we would have. There would be no more quarreling over finances, no more bitter words, but each would be walking in love. <clears throat> love never takes advantage of anyone. 
Love always bears the burdens of the weak. Love says, it's all my fault, dear. Had I done differently or spoken differently or lived in love, it would never have happened. There never has been a divorce where the, hu a, the husband and the wife both walked in love. This is the solution to the divorce problem. <clears throat> when men and women receive eternal life, they're born again. The nature of the Father God is what they've received. And they let that nature dominate them. They grow in this new kind of love until eventually it absorbs them, takes them over, and renews their minds until their thinking is in the realm of love. All suspicion and jealousy dies out. It can find no soil for rootage. The men and women who walk in this new kind of love <clears throat> never injure anyone, never take advantage of anyone. They simply walk and live in God. No matter what evil the adversary, Satan, may bring into a life, love will change that evil so that it will bring forth a fruitage of good. We all somehow know that on the inside. That's why we get convicted. And thank God, you know, the Lord, the Lord said, well, you stepped out of love. That was, oh, you should, that was an unkind word. That was, you know what, you have the wrong attitude. Oh, Lord, forgive me. He's just showing me that and tell you what, we've, that's where the cross comes in. We have to lay down our lives for one another. And uh, I don't, I've, I haven't attained there, but I'm, I, I keep uh, striving. That's the prize of the high calling to attain to this love realm and let Jesus just totally live through you. That's the only way. And that's total victory. Total victory when that happens. <clears throat> you remember that Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. Mark 9, 23. That means a believing one, a child of God. You can understand it now. The believing one is linked up with God. He is a branch of the vine. The branch is the fruit-bearing portion of the vine. He has a legal right to the Father's love and Jesus's ability, Yeshua's ability. <clears throat> he has a legal right to the use of Yeshua's name, to Jesus' name, that has all authority in heaven and earth back of it. He really has the power of attorney to use that name. The real lover <clears throat> is taking Jesus' place in life. He is a reproduction of Jesus. He is carrying out the dreams and the will of, of the Father as Jesus did. <clears throat> You remember he said, I came not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus was the first man who ever walked in love. That's powerful. Remember, read that again. Yeshua was the first man who ever walked in love. When selfishness is eliminated in us and love gains the ascendancy, we will not seek our own any longer. We will live as the master lived in his earth walk. We will seek only the father's will, which will be to the best interests of all the father's children. By the way, what does it mean when we ask in Yeshua's name or in Jesus' name? I believe it's actually Jesus praying through us is when we take we take his place. We come in the name of Jesus is doing the will of God or asking according to his will. 
And you know what? When we do that, we know we have an answer. And when we have God's word and his promises to show us his will, and we ask according to his word, we know we have the answers. Well, what about all the times I... Well, it's not... It's It has to do with... Well, sometimes it is asking amiss. You have not, James says, because you ask not. So that means we have to ask to receive. God says, even though he knows, he wants us to ask and ask in faith. But he said, you receive not because you ask amiss to consume it on your own lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. I think it says that. I know it says that somewhere. I, I think that's... Boy, James will jerk all the slack out of you, won't he? He, Brother James, he was a half-brother of Jesus. He, I mean, he was actually a natural sibling. And uh, that's the first book written in the New Testament, actually. And it's the book of wisdom in the New Testament, just like Proverbs is in the Old. But... Uh, you know what? I guarantee you one thing. If there's a, if a prayer isn't answered, if if somehow you're you're getting a brass heaven, you're not you don't know. First thing I do if I'm if I don't receive or I don't, you know, it I I immediately humble yourself, inquire the Lord. Lord I must be missing it. You don't miss it ever. That's what Brother Hagen used to say, Kenneth Hagen. And it's almost always when we step out of love, just little, when we, when we, uh, when we start, when we start to, as soon as we get outside of the power of attorney to use his name, is when we ask amiss. So I believe we can get to the place where. You know, don't ask for something until you know for sure that's what God wants for you. That wait a little bit and then hallelujah, ask ask for wisdom. That's what James says. That's uh and you have to ask in total faith, not double minded. Lord, where I please give me wisdom, even wisdom to ask. I don't know. Holy Spirit, help me to stay in the name of Jesus. You stay in his name. You're going to receive. I know, I know one thing. I've seen when I pray for others, it seems to be so powerful. When I pray for myself, uh, I, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm on, and sometimes, you know, I, we pray. We, but we have to always remember, God is the wisest being. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. This does, see, but you still have to get rid of unbelief. Uh, this idea of the sovereign God and we're just the robot puppet uh, has to be eradicated from evangelical Christianity because it just simply isn't true. First of all, the sovereign will of God is not being done on the earth right now. Have you noticed? Uh, if you don't believe that, I should put you into... Uh, Chicago tonight in the worst area and see how you see do you think this is the will of God or the, all those people getting shot at uh, last night and you know is that God's will well is it I'll tell you how you know did it happen in Jesus's ministry because the perfect will of God was demonstrated in those three and a half years does it happen in heaven because Jesus prayed thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven what is God's will that none perish but all be saved is God's will sovereign will that's his will that's what he wants is it happening no people are perishing by the millions so yeah, with all the tragedies of history what about the holocaust what are you going to do about that? Was that God's will? Did God, did God, uh, does, does God, uh, did God, uh, was he behind the, 
the the hundreds of millions that were killed because of communism and murdered? And what about the rape of children and the molestation and the pedophilia? Is that God's will for those little boys and girls? No. God has nothing to do with it. That is, that is because God gave authority to man on the earth until this lease runs out. And then you will see the sovereign, bless God, will of Almighty God done on earth as it is in heaven. When? When, when uh, this lease runs out and when Jesus returns. So until that time, he gave us authority. He said, go in my name and make disciples of the nations. Go and preach the gospel. Go and, and, and take authority, cast out devils, heal the sick, bring the poor out of poverty by preaching what I'm doing. Hallelujah. Giving, tithing, increase, healing, and the enforcing the new covenant through the foolishness of preaching this gospel and commanding the wicked to repent, humble themselves, and turn to God before they perish in a devil's hell. That's war. We're in war. So is the sovereign will of God being done on this planet at this time? Absolutely not! Excuse me for yelling. No! God's not the one raping little boys and girls and uh, torturing them all the way till death so they can drink their adrenal fluid and blood. No. That's evil. That is Satan. That is the real battle is going on. Why is it happening? Because God must allow it because we allow it. Why is all this violence occurring in the inner cities of God's covenant nation? Because we departed from God and gave Satan uh, access because of our rebellion, because of our sin, because the church, because the church didn't keep their post, because we didn't watch and pray, because we're lukewarm, backslidden, and we have no authority because of the sin in our lives. And until we repent, what does Second Chronicles 7, 14 say? If, 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 my people who are called by my name, if, will humble themselves and pray and turn from what? Their wicked ways. Then, then, then I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive them and I will heal the land. So what is God, what, what's happening? Judgment has come. Whoa, I thought you said God doesn't do it. There's cause and effect. Depends on which kingdom you're operating in. Are you in the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness? Uh, who are you serving? If the people of this land and of uh, the nations of the world serve Satan, you will come under the curse. And he does one thing. And he's very persistent at it. And that he's ruthless. No mercy. No love. He steals. He kills. And he destroys. That's it. If it steals, kills, and destroys, Satan... Satan has brought it. But God must allow sowing and reaping. He must allow, and he must, that's what judgment is. See, we don't want to hear about judgment because the church is so backslid and conformed to the world that we don't, we can't even endure the Bible anymore. We don't want to hear about that. Well, why do you talk about judgment? Because it's happening. And uh, it's, it's coming to, looks like a city near you. What do you mean? If we don't fast and pray during this time of grace. Now in the time of grace, the church has authority to stop the gates of hell. And in our cities, 
in our communities, in our land. But if we, if we don't humble ourselves, if we don't get the idolatry and sin out of our lives, if we don't take our posts, if we don't take up our cross and follow and let God make us vessels of honor, he can't give us the authority to pray and stop the darkness. He's looking for intercessors. Well, just a few. Well, God also has a corporate requirement on, on his church. And when God gives authority to a city, to a, a ministry gift, like a pastor or uh, someone who operates, you have authority. You have keys of authority in that city. And if the church doesn't fast and pray, you know, spiritual barbarians will invade your land, just like the Visigoths and the Huns and the the Canaanites and the Hittites. I mean, what are, the, the enemies of God rise up when the church and when Israel and the church uh, backslides and we have no, the devil laughs at people that aren't holy. He laughs at you. Why? You have no power in your life because you're not pure and you're not sold out. I'm not saying you as an individual. I'm saying you as the backslidden Laodicean church of 2020. There's a church within the church. I'm very aware of that. But then, after the rapture of the the pre-tribulation catching away of the bride, the overcoming church, the true church that's on the earth right now, that re when that restrainer is removed, that's the only thing restraining. It's restraining the Antichrist. It's restraining the globalist system. It's restraining the uh, Luciferian cabals or whatever they are. Uh, it's restraining the elite of the world, the wicked, the wealthy. The, it's restraining the fullness of the deception, mind control, and uh, genetic mutation biology, and you know, and all of this transhumanism or whatever with machines and humans, and all of the things that we see on the horizon that have been held back and restrained. Why? Because a few of us got on our faces, humbled ourselves. The problem is we're in, we're in the fullness of these birth pangs now are coming fast and they're not going to stop. I heard it from the high court of heaven in a vision. I saw the court case. I'm telling you that God says he's extending. He has extended for the grand finale until the fullness of the bride comes in. The great commission is fulfilled and our job gets done, my heart is already in heaven. It's not here anymore. My heart, my desires, my affections, that's what the Bible says. Set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. For your life is hid with Messiah in God. Love not the world, neither do the things that are in the world. The world is passing away and the lust of it, but he that does the will of God, that's operating in the name of Jesus, right? I didn't get very far tonight because I got, the Lord is just this prophetic, the prophet in me rises up. Hallelujah. That's who God made me to be. I have to, I have this difficult, this unpleasant task very often for me of warning you and calling forth repentance and the Lordship of Messiah, Lordship of Christ, full surrender, absolute surrender, and uh, warning, warning you to flee from the wrath to come because the wrath to come is coming. Whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you have some other charismatic Christian fantasy fairy tale or not, it doesn't matter. The Bible says it, God says it, 
and he is holy and he will judge the wicked and damn their souls to an eternal hell. Welcome to the New Testament. Oh, oh. that's not very nice. God is holy. He's also love. So the new kind of love in me warns you, you better turn around. You better humble yourself. You better pray, church, in America. Why? Because in the tribulation is not under grace. That's under law. That's the 70th week of Daniel. That is the time when God must cleanse the world of, of all evil and satanic power and all who yield to it. We don't like the idea that anybody could actually be evil and wicked. Well, that woman with her, with that Gaga woman, with the blood of the innocents coming out of her mouth on that album cover, if that isn't evil, what is? Give me a New Testament break. The time would come, Paul said, they won't endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves, teachers having itching ears. Give me something smooth. Well, aren't you doing that with your prostrate? No, no. I'm telling you the good news and the bad news. The good news doesn't exist without the bad news. The bad news is if you don't repent, you will perish. That's the, that's, that's the foundational bad news. You, it wasn't your fault. You were born into Adam's fallen race. That's why you have to be born out of it. You have to be recreated. You have to make Jesus the Lord of your life. But don't play games with a, a prayer if you don't mean it. Don't just play games. Uh, there, there isn't a partial surrender. There is an absolute surrender. And that's only being a love slave of our Lord. That's the only place of victory and safety, especially in this perilous time. Make things right with God. So the love of God constraineth me. The love of God also calls me to boldly proclaim, get right with God while there's still time. Let me at least finish this page and a half here uh, just a... if we walk in love <coughs> we will wa be walking as Jesus walked you don't sound like you're walking in love well if you ever saw hell's fury if you ever saw it this would you would understand why that's the greatest love I can possibly give to you there's no greater love than to warn you. That's a place God doesn't want you to go. It's not his will that any perish there. And this is the only antidote to the eternal poison. It's Jesus. There is no other. There is no other. There's no other way to God. There's no other back door to heaven. There's no nirvana. There's no uh, oneness with the Krishna. Uh, there's no... Uh, uh, the government is not going to save you. Communism won't save you. Marxism won't save you. God, no. <clears throat> it will killeth you dead if you allow it to overthrow the liberty that was fought, fought at such through the blood of the martyrs of Messiah. We will give ourselves, if we walk in love, we will give ourselves to this message as well. You know why? You know why I'm not playing 100 something concerts a year or whatever, 200 or playing in the classical world? 
because I wouldn't shut up about Jesus. That's why I told everybody all the time, everybody all the time. I don't care if you're, <clears throat> you're uh, the head of some management. I don't care if you're the greatest violin teacher in the world. I don't care if you're the <clears throat> you're a billionaire or you're a pauper. I don't care if you, you know, you teach at Juilliard or Curtis or you have some, you know, you're some hoity-toity classical music person. I don't care. I'm not afraid of you. If you don't repent, you will bust hell wide open. If you don't humble yourself, and surrender to Jesus 100%. I don't care if you're the king of the world. It doesn't matter. I really don't care what you think about me. I could care less, especially in that old world. This is the way David said it. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. You can have all of your concert applause you want. I'd rather have the applause of heaven. As for me and my house, I've gone all in. And you can't shut me up, Mr. Devil. And you prominent great person or whoever's listening, you can't shut me up either. And you can't turn me off either because the, well, the Holy Spirit won't let you. I'm, will, I'm willing to love you enough to get in your face and warn you if you don't receive Jesus you have no hope and you will perish and you will burn and burn and burn and burn your flesh will consume off of you and it'll come back on and it's everlasting torment it never stops forever and ever and ever and all your achievement and all of all all everything that you've ever done is meaningless. You lose it all. You lose all hope. There's not one there's not one drop of water. There's not one moment of pleasure. There's not one uh there's not one ray of sunshine. There isn't one good thing. And this is the covenant, the holy covenant. Making Jesus Lord is the only way. And if you knew how wonderful heaven was and how great my career will be forever and ever 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 and ever, you'd understand why you can take this life and violent career and put it somewhere. That's why. Hallelujah. Well, nobody can accuse me of holding back, can they? And I do love you. If we walk in love, we will be walking as Jesus walked. We will give ourselves for the redemption of the world as Jesus gave himself. We cannot die for their sins, but we can live the love life for their salvation. And part of that love life is paying the price to get this message to you and get it through the concrete of your pride and unbelief and get it through your skull. That's welcome to the sweet love of Jesus who died for you that you could live. We will slowly but surely develop into real lovers like our Lord. And I love you. Hallelujah. Faith will no longer be a struggle or a thing to be desired in the sense of, I gotta get faith, I gotta get faith, oh, I gotta believe. No, you gotta take the place of Jesus and then all authority, all of heaven's provision you have access to. And why? So that we can get this gospel, that we can get this message out to those who just the love of God melts their heart and those that we say with fear, Jude says, hating the garments spotted by the flesh, pulling them out of the fire, just pulling you out of the fire. 
Somebody wants to receive Jesus. All right, I'll do it. And we'll end tonight with that. Praise God, I've gone a little over. <clears throat> Made it a page and a half, my God. If you want to come to God and make things right, then I'll lead you in a prayer. And if you mean it from your heart, I want you to pray it. But know right now, there's only one way and that's all in. You can't just bet, bet a little bit of your pot. Say, well, maybe I'll try this. No, don't try it. Because you can't do it in yourself anyway. You have to surrender. You ready to do that? Lord says to pray. Yes, sir. Pray these words. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer, the sinner's prayer, which is what? You are a sinner. And uh, you need to become a saint, if you will. You need to be born out of one kingdom into the other spiritually. And God loves you enough to do that. How do we do that? By faith and by a simple prayer. So let's just say this. Lord Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, I come to you tonight. I am a sinner. I have fallen away from you. I've gone my own way. I am guilty in your sight. I have rebelled against your authority. I have put other gods in your place. Please have mercy on me. Please forgive me of the terrible sin and sins of my life before. I believe what I heard tonight Faith has risen in my heart and I am convicted of my sin. I'm so sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. I repent now. I turn away from Satan. I turn away from sin. I turn away from idolatry. I turn away from every work of darkness. Jesus, come into my heart. Change me from the inside out. I don't know how to change myself. I can't do it. I've tried and I cannot do it. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Take up the throne of my life. I surrender absolutely to you now. Jesus, be my Lord. Be my absolute Lord and my Savior. Take up the throne of my heart. I give you my future. I give you my life. I go all in right now. The best I know how, I humble myself in your sight. Make something beautiful out of my life. I've wrecked it, but Lord, you can turn it around for good. I receive you as my Lord and Savior now. I want to be born again. Let me be born out of darkness into your wonderful light. I want this new kind of love. Jesus, love through me, live through me. Make me brand new on the inside. Holy Spirit, come. Come in your fire. I receive the fullness of 
the, the Ruach HaKodesh, the precious Holy Spirit. Burn out of me everything you hate and burn into me everything you love. I turn from my wicked ways right now. I'll have no other gods before you. Make me pure and holy and give me power to live this supernatural overcoming life. Make me a part of that beautiful lady and bride. Thank you, Lord. From this night forward, I'll never be the same. Thank you for giving me that miracle. For you said I must be born again. Well, I receive that miracle of a spiritual rebirth right now. Bring me out of darkness into your wonderful life, light, light and life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. A wonderful night. At least I, I, I want to welcome you to the family of God. If you prayed that for the first time or you're coming back to God and you, you backslid, you, 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 you drifted away from your first love, well, you just welcome home. Welcome home. God loves, the Father loves the prodigal. Always, always restore, run to meet you and restore you. Hallelujah. Well, this time, don't let Satan, don't let him tempt you and go off into some, uh, some flowery path of deception anymore. The time is short. The glory is here. You can make a difference. Jesus is about to appear. <laughs> Have no fear, <laughs> for you are his dear. <laughs> All right, well, I love you. And uh, remember, at uh, 11 o'clock this evening, about two and a half hours here in the West Coast, I'm going to be going to be praying for everyone that... Uh, that has posted here and any prayer requests I agree with you and I pray and I bless all the dear ones I bless every name I I just lift your name up before the Father and uh, I just believe this covering is over you and I'm going to bless you now to say good night with the ironic benediction and as soon as I can I am going to uh, uh, I in the next few days, I'm going to try to do it tomorrow. I will give it to you in Hebrew very soon. And I'm going, because I know it, I just need to go over it. And uh, as a rabbi, I can bless you with both covenants. Praise the Lord. The first covenant and the second covenant. And God said in, in uh, uh, he told in Numbers chapter 6, he told the Levites, which I am on my mother's side, uh, actually, Le Levite, and uh, I can bless you. Uh, he said, bless the children of Israel, both the natural and the adopted, grafted in ones. Oh, yes, remember, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, contact me. Let me know. I want to I wanna help you. I want to, uh, I, I want to give you some, uh, you know, we find we need a good church for you to go to need somewhere and meanwhile just come just tune in every night you're like a brand new baby someone been born you're born spiritually like you are physically just little little babies and we grow we grow through the sincere milk and meat of the word of god we grow we grow up into him in all things we grow through the teaching and preaching of god's incorruptible seed the the bible the word of god Get yourself a good Bible. Um, you know, might as well start out with the best and get the King James Version. That's the best. 
at least in English. Now, if you want to read it in the original language, please do. Uh, you might have to go to school for about 10 to 15 years to, to learn it in the original language if you want the inerrant, holy, jot and tittle every word of God in the Hebrew, ancient Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Hallelujah. That's all right. But uh, get a good get get a Bible that you can read. Start with the Gospel of John. Uh, that's a very it's in the New Testament. Start reading that, and uh, get in touch with me. I know there were several that were born again tonight. I I just know that in my spirit. Yes, and the Lord just said a prominent artist musician was listening, classical musician, and you were born again tonight. Let me know. I won't embarrass you but I'll help you. Just let me know. Contact me. Write me here. Uh, write me a personal message if you're... But let me know. Uh, you need to tell people. You need to let people know. We need each other. You need... You need... Uh, you need a good covering over you. So I'm going to place all the dear ones under the, this covering... House of Healing, Beit Rafa. So now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his shalom peace. And may the grace of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Ruach HaKodesh, the precious Holy Spirit, be yours. Be blessed now and protected and provided for and healed and delivered. Thank you for listening this evening and uh, hallelujah. We'll see you again tomorrow night, Lord willing, at uh, six o'clock uh, Pacific time here. Okay, So, good night and shalom. <laughs>